In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God's word for this week, Psalm 96, verses 1 through 9. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That hymn told us to give God everything we've got, and I think we pretty well attempted that. Well, friends in Christ, back in 1882, Oscar Wilde, who is the great Irish playwright, came from England to New York. And even back then, when you come from one country to another, the customs agents meet you and they want to know what you're bringing into the country, what you have to declare. So if you've ever traveled overseas or abroad, you know that the custom agents might say to you, what do you have to declare? And now there are even forms that go along with it. Well, Oscar Wilde, supposedly, when he came from England to New York and they said, what do you have to declare? He said, I have nothing to declare except my genius. We don't know for sure if he really said that, but it certainly fits kind of his reputation and character. He was sharp-witted and arrogant and thought quite a bit of himself, and so he said, this is what I've got to declare. I wouldn't try that today, but what do we have to declare? When you think about what God gives you, what God has given you, what you have, what you would declare, what's yours, what's God's, it gets a little bit at the psalm, at least the way that I read it. Because we read this verse, declare his glory among the nations. And then later on, we've got this interesting word, ascribe, that is not used very often. I mean, I guess unless you're a scribe, maybe you don't ascribe that often. It is where it comes from, actually, from the Latin word. Okay, but, but ascribe to the Lord is, is here a number of times right in a row, and it's significant in what that means, as we'll unpack that for a minute. So what do we have to declare before God? What is ours? Truth be told, all we bring to the table, the baggage that we would claim, it's our sin. That's what we bring into life, what we carry around with us wherever we go, whatever we're doing, it's our sin with us. There's great temptation to put that off to the side and to kind of try and not declare that or not own that, not want anything to do with it, not want the price that needs to be paid for when you go through customs and you're bringing in a lot of perfume or cigarettes or alcohol, whatever people bring through customs that you have to pay duty on, we would rather not have a price attached to it. But we know there's a great price. It's the price of Jesus' life and death. So you get the gospel right away here, we'll come back at the end. But that's what was necessary to pay the price for what we have to declare our sinfulness. As we get into the psalm, though, it's so straightforward that it's one of those psalms that if you've read many psalms in this category, psalm of praise, they start to sound a lot like each other. It's just like you're in church all the time. Kind of like this Reformation week, when, when just chapel once a day isn't enough and we do all kinds of extra stuff and we have multiple services and is there too much praising going on and maybe 
if we think too much of ourselves in the midst of all that praising and what we're bringing to, t- to the table, what we're bringing to God, then we've got it wrong. We've got it backwards because the psalmist is very intent upon us realizing who God is and who we are. And so ascribe to the Lord, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Ascribe is a fancy way of saying give credit to or attribute to. It's kind of a significant Hebrew word. We're not going to get into a word study now, but, but the, the times you find ascribe, it's a pretty powerful thing to say this is what is due to God and not what is due to us. So God gets the credit for everything, in other words. But sometimes we forget that. Like Oscar Wilde, maybe we think that we're God's gift to the world instead of the world being God's gift to us, which is exactly what this psalm is talking about. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, greatly to be praised. The Lord made the heavens. All the gods of the people, peoples, are worthless idols. When we hold ourselves up and all the great things that we do, we've got it backwards. We're trying to be something we're not. There's a famous play of Oscar Wilde, maybe the one he's best known for. It's called The Importance of Being Earnest. It's still done a lot of times. Maybe you've seen it as a high school production, or I think Concordia's done it. I don't know how long ago that was, but The Importance of Being Earnest, and it's, it's a word play. So the word earnest certainly means truthful, trustworthy, forthright. But there's a guy in this play, it's kind of a social satire commentary, there's a guy in this play whose name is Jack, but he calls himself Ernest, like the man's name, Ernest, like Ernie, Ernest, because he wants to be seen as Ernest, because apparently in the 1890s, women liked the name Ernest, and they thought if a guy was named Ernest, then he probably was Ernest, so he tries to play himself off as something that he's not, and the importance of being earnest. You get it? Yeah. And that's us. Oscar Wilde, Ernest, Jack, us. We just so often do it backwards to take credit for what we're doing. And in the midst of the Reformation, that's really the central message of it all. That it's God's gift to us, that grace, that faith, which he would give to us. And even the faith, which we would claim as our own and take credit for, is something that was credited to us, given as a gift. You know, if you look in the Bible and you do a kind of a concordant, a study of of the words and, and this, you'll find that these identical words appear another place in the Bible. If you look at 1 Chronicles 16, you find this entire psalm is right there on the occasion of King David having the ark brought into Jerusalem as kind of the celebration of God's presence and what it meant that God was with them and that when God's ark, his presence was there, it represented that we could count on his blessings. That whole process with David and the ark was not without difficulty in who's responsible for for doing what, because David wanted to build God a temple. God said, no, it's not you. I'll give the direction. And so even the, the use of this psalm in that context of praise is a reminder of God doing everything for us. So, it's God's gift to the world, 
God's gift of the world first, creation, and then God's gift to the world, not us, not Martin Luther, but Jesus, the Savior. The one who in all truth and sincerity and earnestness came to take on a role which was not his, where the sins belonged to him. And what did he have to declare before God? The sin of the whole world. And he would pay the price as he came into this world. So, what are we left with? A great psalm of praise. The opportunity to continue that. And a life together where we sing God's praise. May we do that today and throughout our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.